Welcome to Health Matters on Channels Television. It's nice to have you on the show. I am Jomi Otaigwe. Medicines are meant to help us get well when we get ill. At some point, we are not feeling well, we go to the doctor, and then the doctor prescribes medicines. But when medicines are misused, underused, or overused, then there can be some challenges, particularly knowing that these medicines can hurt us. To shed more light on this particular topic today, we have in the studio a pharmacist and the managing director of Timotech Pharmacy, Mr. Timothy Ojo. Thank you so much for joining us today on the program. Thank you, Madam. Good, uh, good afternoon, viewers. Okay, so um, when does safe medicine use process? When does it start? Uh, when we begin to talk about uh, medicine or drugs, we know these drugs are substances that can affect the function of the human body or in animals. When we, uh, in, in veterinary drugs, for example, then uh, there are things that we must consider when we are talking about drugs. We talk about safety and we talk about efficacy. It's okay. We talk about safety and efficacy. So when does the safety part of it start? Is it from when I go to the doctor or when I get to the pharmacy? Uh, we all know that drugs are that substances that can be taken when there is a need for it, a, a medical disorder in the body system. Definitely, uh, when somebody is sick, I think the first thing uh, the patient uh, the, 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 the needs to go to the hospital to get a prescription, uh, meeting a doctor, and then because uh, you can, ordinarily you can, uh, we will not advise people to just take their medications on a self, uh, as in a form of self-medications. So I encourage them to, first of all, either go to, the, uh, to their pharmacy, especially in, uh, all over the world, uh, from, in fact from study that we have even had, we believe that most people, their first point of call is the pharmacy. Then from there, maybe there could be some conditions where the patient might also need to go to the hospital. But most cases, even most of the practice, uh, practicing pharmacies, in, uh, for example, in Nigeria, maybe by the time they assess the patient, uh, maybe through counseling, most of them, there is an option of a referral because, to hospitals. Because, okay, so there, that means there are some medications that we can get over the counter. Uh, drugs like, drugs like, are in two forms. Okay, we have the on-the-counter the on the uh, the on the drugs, OTC, then there we have the prescription drugs. Okay, so tell us the difference. The uh, OTC medications drugs, they are drugs that we, that have been proven from studies that the the side effect is, uh, is it could be minimal. That means that, mean that it's something that uh, the patient can actually take on their own because it has been proven from study that most of these drugs are less harmful compared to the prescription drugs. Okay. But in, in case of the prescription drugs, uh, these are mostly ethical drugs that uh, a patient cannot just uh, just like that, get to any pharmacy and pick a drug that, that fall under these uh, uh, prescription drugs. So it has to be prescribed doctor. by a medical doctor? Uh, by medical practitioners. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, when you now go to the doctor and the doctor gives a prescription and yeah. say, you need to take this medication, from then onwards, um, the person goes to the pharmacist. What is the role of the pharmacist in, in drug dispensation? Uh, when the patient comes to the pharmacy with their prescription, well, the, duty, the function of the pharmacy is to, uh, first of all, as, uh, see the prescription. And there are so many things. Uh, there's, uh, one can, uh, the pharmacist can go through and see if there is uh, any error. 
if there is any error that is uh, or the prescription, the uh, the physician or the prescriber. Because there indeed can be error. Yeah, yeah, possibly. Yeah. Okay. No, uh, no, no one is perfect. The prescriber, there could be an error in the prescriptions, and then the uh, pharmacy being an expert on drugs, they interpret the prescriptions and they are able to dispense the product to the patient, and then with uh, proper dosage regimen and uh, counseling, because there are some product that needs to be taken, maybe before food, or uh, there are some that will be taken after food. So, uh, so in all these situations, the pharmacists are there to advise the patient. Okay, that is why it's always good for uh, for a patient to, after getting a prescription from, from their prescriber or their physician, to get to the pharmacist because they will be able to direct them properly on their medications. Yeah, because I was thinking that the job of the pharmacist is not just to, you know, give the medication to the patient. It's to also be able to advise and say, this is how you take this medication. This is what you um, uh, used to take it in terms of uh, perhaps uh, you eat before you take or you just take uh, some form of liquid before you, know, you take those kind of medication. So it's not just a question of uh, go get to the pharmacist and the pharmacist gives you the, the medication and you go away. No, no. Okay. There's more than that. Anybody, if we, the role of pharmacist is, uh, is, is in the area of counseling, they must ensure that uh, the, 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 the correct dosage is given to the patient based on the prescription and their proper advice on how to use the medication. But just like I have I've mentioned, there are some drugs properly that will work better when taken before me. There are some medications that we need to be taking it means that we function better when taking after me. So those advice needs to be given to the patient and it's from very the pharmacist. And it's very and important it's to, to follow it, to follow right, the yeah. advice. Yeah. Okay. And then the, and some of the area that the pharmacist also can advise the patient, the area of side effect of some of this product. Some products, some, some uh, drugs could be taken by a patient and they begin to experience some uh, side effect. Like, for example, headache or... Uh, that could be vomiting. side effect of that. Yes, vomiting, nausea. So by the time, but if the information has been given to the to the patient on hand, so the patient will not uh, it will not be it will, there will not be any confusion. Mm. Because maybe some patient may decide to stop the medication because of on, the severe on side their effect. Own. Okay, because on of, their own. of because of, side of the or desirable effect okay. of the drugs. When we buy most of the medication, it's either you find um, a leaflet inside of the pack or there's some, you know, letters on the pack itself where, okay, for instance, like the one that's um, showing on the screen, now that's a leaflet from inside of, you know, a, a pack of medication. How important is it for everyone who is about to take such medication to read or get someone to read this leaflets to them? Uh, it is always better because uh, the attitudes of some of us, of the patient is that, especially the OTC medications, you know, these are drugs that are, uh, you take the drugs based is on self-medications. You take it on your own because, but most of this drug that you walk into the pharmacy to buy, you discover that the leaflet inside it is always good for the people to read the content of the, of the leaflet. Like what, can they, what, can, what sort of things can they find there? The dosage could be there. Then the, uh, some of the instructions, whether to eat, maybe the drug should be taken before food or after meal. Most of the time it's stated on the leaflet. And some of the contraindications or some possible or likely side effect of the drugs. Okay, so and even if you even if you miss out on what uh, the pharmacist has told you, you can get more information, information. about that particular drug on, uh, on in the, the leaflet. leaflet. So I advise people that they can still go through. It is also they should make it a duty to go through the leaflet mm. before taking their medications. Okay, now let's talk about a practice that seemed to uh, 
the uh, a practice that seems to be common amongst uh, the people, and that is the sharing of medication. And so someone is having a particular kind of symptom, and the person has gone to the hospital and seen the doctor, and the doctor has prescribed a particular medicine. And because another person, you know, a neighbor, a friend, a sister, is also having similar symptoms, and they just, you know, oh, okay, so this has happened to me before. I used so, 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 and so kind of medicine, and, you know, they just, the next person just say, okay, then it should work for me. Is that a good practice? It is very wrong for people to share their prescription drugs or where they are messing with any other person. Because if you, if you are given a particular drug from uh, the hospital from, by your doctor or by your, from, or from your pharmacist, it's meant for you and you only. Because the medical disorder that you may be having may not be exactly be the same as the person that you are telling to use the same medications. So at the end of the day, you may be giving a wrong medication to the other fellow. So it should, medication should never be shared with another, with, with other people. Perhaps because, you know, the condition or the symptoms The medical just, condition, definitely, it may, may look the, the same. same. It may look the same. And even but if it's may, the same, it the dosage. The, same. the dosage may not be the same. And even the drug of choice may not, may not be the same. And so it's important for individuals who may have different symptoms to see the doctor and you know get proper prescription without having to share medication that is how others. it should be you should never share your medications with any other person it's meant for you okay now let's talk about dosage okay. you find that um, okay for malaria medicine for instance and you find it's prescribed that you take four in the morning uh, for for a start and then as applicable and then someone or the person who is taking this medicine feels better after they, for instance taking the first second dose of, of the med medication and you know that's about it how important is it to follow you know this dosage uh, and finish on the medication it is very it is always good and proper for people to make sure that the medications that uh, given to you, the dosage is, f uh, is completed. Because if you don't complete the dosage of your medications, uh, number one, the, the medical condition that you are treating may be compromised. Then secondly, at the same time, especially the antibiotics, you are exposing, the, uh, exposing that drug, there could be a problem of uh, uh, drug failure. If you begin to use mm -hmm. uh, a, a product and you don't complete the, 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 the dosage regimen. So we indirectly... The parasite might, you know, yes, become... We, um, yes, we are affecting that product, may not be effective the next time that you have cause to use the same message. So, and then it will slow, it may also slow down the, the recovery rate from that condition. It may, the symptom may appear to have disappeared, but if you, if, if you draw back and you, you, you stop your medications, by the time the condition will now come up again, it may be in a very serious level, mm. which may even defer, uh, which may require very, uh, very severe uh, options to, to manage that condition. To, run, to resolve or to manage that condition. Okay. Okay, we'll just take a quick break, and when we come back, Pharmacist Joe will still be in the house. And if you have uh, questions, comments, uh, you will join us in this discussion. You're watching Health Matters on Channels Television, and we are looking into safe medicine use. If you have any question, you have comments, you can tweet at CTV underscore Yomi O or call 0805-468-3514. The number should be on your screen. Okay, so um, let's go into how to handle medication and storage. I see 
in some areas, people selling medicines in kiosks. I've also seen pharmacists, uh, pharmacies where the air conditioning is not right. For instance, it's too humid or it's too hot inside of that. What effect can it have on the medicines in such places? Uh, a medicine should be, drugs should be stored adequately according to the manufacturer's recommendation. There is a, a, every drug has a particular temperature that is allowed where that uh, for storage. So in a situation where drugs are kept above uh, a particular recommended temperature, definitely uh, it can damage that particular product that will bring, uh, reduce the efficacy of that product when it is being used. Then, like for example, most of the vaccines now, they, are, they have to be kept in a regulated temperature. Most okay. of them, ice cold uh, temperature. Okay. If you now expose this, Fasces to eat. To heat, then it, it damages. Have, yes. Okay, uh, let's let's be joined effect. by Briggs from Protacot. Yeah. Briggs, thank you for joining us. Okay, ma. Yeah, I'm really enjoying your program this morning, but the question I want to. Okay, I want to find out the relationship between the pharmacy and the doctor. Because situation, there are some situations sometimes when a doctor gives a prescription. A pharmacy, there will be a little, a kind of a little misunderstanding. So let him also, the relationship between pharmacy and that doctor in okay. terms of issues uh, drugs. All right, thank you, Briggs. He wants to know the relationship that should be between a pharmacist and a doctor. Uh, I think uh, both uh, pharmacists and doctors, they are co-laborers. Mm -hmm. To so see, <laughs> yes, we have a common goal, working towards a common goal. That is the, to see that the patient is well. So the, the doctors will prescribe. The, the pharmacist too, we dispense. we dispense and cancel the patient. And in fact, the two of them, they are, I believe they, are, they should be working together. That is the property. Because the, the ultimate goal of all the air teams is to see that the patient is well. It's well. But in a situation where we begin to disagree, where disagreement may, may come, but we disagree to agree mm -hmm. in the interest of the patient. Of the patient. Yeah. Okay, so you were talking about storage. So some of us have first aid boxes in our homes and we put some medication in it. Sometimes we even forget that those medicines are there. How should we take care of our first aid boxes uh, in terms of the medicines in it? Uh, the, for those of us that uh, have their first aid boxes at home, number one, I will encourage us that we should keep this, this first aid box away from the reach from the of our reach children. Of children. Okay, so That's please, number one. Please hold your thoughts before you say number two. We are being joined by James from uh, Satellite Town. James? Hello, James. Yes. Please go ahead with your question or comment. Please, uh, presently I've been uh, taking uh, their kids. Yes, presently I've been taking uh, their Yes, I can hear you. Uh, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Go ahead, please. We can hear you clearly. Presently, I've been taking a diaclofenac for pain, and it's like the pain still persists. What do I do? Okay. Uh, uh, if I may ask, sir, why you have pains, you have been taking diaclofenac, is it prescribed? Recommended is it from the doctor or from the pharmacist okay. or self or self medication? I will advise you that you either see your pharmacist or go back and see your doctor. If you take diaclofenac and this, the symptoms persist, 
There see, could be other see, problems that you have. Doctor as well. See your <laughs> doctor, <laughs> see your pharmacist. Okay. You will get the best from them. Thank you. Okay, so you said, you've said the first thing about the first aid box where we keep our medicines. It should be kept out of the reach of children. Mm -hmm. You were going to say number two. Number two, that then there should be regular checks on those medications kept in the first aid boxes. There could be some drugs there, maybe the OTC medicine that we have kept there that, it, uh, that has already expired. So we need to remove them and replace with the one that has a long chef life hmm. so okay and then for I, I mentioned earlier about you know selling medicines in kiosks should we buy medicines from such places it is not uh, proper for people to go and be buying drugs from uh, kiosks drugs are they, we should realize that this has chemical sub, uh, substances that can affect even the function of, uh, of the entire body of, uh, of, uh, of our body. Even so, though they are meant to help us yes, in some way. If, it is, if, if drugs are used wrongly, you, I believe uh, there is a regulation. There are some pharmacies that have been licensed through the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria. So we encourage people to go to register pharmacy okay. to get their medications. Or when they are sick, you either go to your pharmacy, you go to the register, doctor, register pharmacy, or you go to your hospital to see your Okay, let, let, let's take this yeah. call from Chuku Nyeri. Hello. Hello, Ma. Thank you for joining us. Quickly, let's have your question or comment. Uh, uh, I'm telling you people, how do we now get to Hello? 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 Hello. Hello, we can hear you. How do people in the rural area, people in the rural area, okay. Yes, how, how, how can they manage themselves get the doctor? Okay, all right. Thank you, Chiku Yeri. So, for those who are living in the rural areas, how can they get safe medicines? Uh, for those in the rural areas, uh, we realize that presently in Nigeria now the, the population is increasing heavily on a daily basis. But I believe the government too should also be proactive. The, uh, the, the primary air centers, then I think people can, in most of the villages, I know some of the, the, this, some of the villages now there are a lot of from uh, health centers that people can actually go and get, uh, and get their medications their and see their doctors there. Okay. Or people that are already trained. Okay. I know some of them are in some of these health centers all over the places. We know the population is massive now in Nigeria. And uh, we d uh, actually, we don't have enough, enough. pharmacies and doctors okay. to go around to handle a population close to about... Uh, uh, about, we're, we're about 200, 200 million. million. Thank yeah. you so yeah. much for coming on the show today. We've been having a chat on safe drug use, and our guest has been pharmacist Timothy Ojo, who is the managing director of Timotech Pharmacy. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And that's how we wrap up Health Matters for today. You can find this and other editions of the program on youtube.com forward slash channels web. Thank you so much for watching. I am your me or Taibi. <laughs>